If you're going to have millions of children who need a radically different education, you also have to have hundreds of thousands of teachers. How do you do that in incredibly low-income communities and countries that don't have um, you know, a wealth of population that's highly educated with tons of pedagogy training and content knowledge themselves. Those things we started thinking through was how could you take another problem within most of these same communities, which is youth and young adult unemployment. And is it possible to rapidly upskill individuals to become effective teachers? We looked at a lot of RCT trials that have been done on relationships between teacher training and outcomes and how to better prepare teachers, and then decided that the key move that we were going to make was having a division of labor between content creation and content delivery. But by taking those individuals, having about 50 of them, having them working on this very robust curriculum, we can then leverage them working on each lesson for five to 10 hours, testing it in the field, looking at the examination results, tweaking that lesson, and then give that to 2,500 teachers who would have never been able to have access to those same resources or time to prepare. In 2013, we shifted to a full digital publishing model. So now every one of our teachers has an internet-enabled e-reader or you know, a small tablet, and we publish all of our curriculum to them that way. In addition to sending them our curriculum that way, which makes it easier to essentially to reprint, you know, to change things if we want to tweak a lesson, change a problem, respond to how children did on the last assessment and give them something new, it then becomes very easy. You can publish every week rather than many publishing houses that publish every three or four years. With the tablets, which we um, make into, we use a smartphone to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. We then are able to sync data back and forth between each school and our central service center twice a day. So we know the minute a teacher showed up, we know the attendance of every pupil twice a day. We know when a teacher leaves. Every seven to 10 days, we currently get 250,000 assessment scores across all the subjects you know, that all of our children are taking. Yeah. And so it's incredibly robust data to then allow us to look at both everything from, you know, did 80% of our teachers finish a lesson 10 minutes early? Because we can actually track their page turns on the computers. So then we know, okay, that content was too short for the lesson. So that's a system-wide issue. That lesson needs to be more robust. We, mis we misestimated the timing of the lesson. There's no electricity at any one of our schools. We don't have a um, wired internet either. So we leverage two things in our ecosystem. So one is we leverage the mobile network to use a smartphone to create a Wi-Fi hotspot to sync from the tablets to the Wi-Fi hotspot and then back to the service center. But similarly, not every Every community in Kenya essentially has some form of electricity. Not to every location within the community necessarily. So we, both for security reasons and for charging, each one of our staff, each one of our teachers takes their own device home with them. So it's a distributed risk. And then they can charge it either at home or at various charging points around the community. So that way, as a school, we don't have to be limited by the difficulty of still gaining access to electricity, but we can still benefit from that in general electricity is available in the community.